afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Uh, sorry, I can't make it there physically it's due to the traffic okay. situation in Lagos. Uh, I am, okay. I'm very honored and delighted to be in the midst of safety professionals. Uh, I wish to thank the executive for doing a very good job. It is very, very important that the safety of workers and safety of everybody wherever we work uh, is key. And the professional body is doing something that will help us in this line. However, the challenges facing safety professionals uh, uh, in this present time can not be just mentioned in the few. And that's why we want to talk about how climate change is trying to affect and will also affect the safety and net of, of workers and how safety professionals can help to mitigate this effect. I, I can start with this quote. It said, according to the uh, International Labor Organization, adaptation to climate change and the impact on employment, it's very, very key. To reduce the impact of climate change and also to reduce the impact of climate change on workers, it is important that the professionals do something. Climate change is not only an environmental issue, it's also a public health issue. Workers in many occupational and industrial categories already experience climate and weather-related hazard, whether in their job or in the day-to-day -day activities. My presentation will be in this form. There will be introduction, basic definitions, which most of us are familiar with, many phases of climate change, effect of climate change, the impact of climate change, and how climate change is going to affect the occupational health and safety, and how can we mitigate it and probably share some recommendations where professionals will be able to make use of. According to a few studies that have explored the impact of climate change on occupational health and safety, and based on literature review between 1998 and 2008, according to the Octo's judgment and shift in 2019, the main impact of climate change on the health and safety of workers can include increase in ambient temperature, air pollution, exposure to ultraviolet radiation, extreme weather events, increase in communicable vector diseases, industrial tension and emerging industrial issues, and change in built environment. So what is the relationship between global climate change and occupational health and safety? This can either be on the workplace, it can also be on the worker, it can also be on the occupation and which can lead to morbidity, mortality, and also increase injury. So let's define climate change and you know, which and everybody uh, will be familiar with. But my definition will be according to the framework convention in the Arctic set. Climate change is a change in climate which is attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that can alter the composition of global atmosphere, which in addition to natural climate variability, which means apart from human activity, the natural activities can also induce climate change. However, the anthropogenic activity is the one that is majorly of concern. So what is occupational health and safety? It's a branch of public health aimed to improve workplace health and safety, thereby putting in standard that should be followed. So what, who are we? The professionals working. An occupational health and safety professional is a qualified and competent person in an organization who is responsible for monitoring, controlling workplace risk and hazard, which means this person must be a professional. He must be certified. Don't say, okay, just, okay, I have, I, I studied this, no. You have to be a professional. You must be part of the professional body before you can be called an occupational health and safety professional. So let's just see. People have been saying, is there really climate change? Or are we just saying there's something? I I'll share with us some of the pictures that can help us to deplete that, yes, climate change is really real. This is Hurricane Isaac uh, 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 taken in, in the year 2000. This is a mountain, the picture that was taken, the Picture by the left was taken in 1928, and the other picture was taken in the year 2000. You can see that the glacier has really disappeared. This is a, also an, a picture taken in 1928, 
and also taken in 2004. You can see how the ice has really melted and, and disappeared. These are classical examples that the climate and the weather is also changing. Also the same, the next picture. Apart from uh, ice melting, there are serious coastal erosion. And you can see the house by the beach side. The picture taken in 1999 and the picture taken in 2004. You can see that the erosion has heating up up to where the, the, the house is. These are examples of what climate change is all about. Ocean surge is also part of the thing that shows us that climate change is, is, is real. You can see the top of the mountain. The ice has, has disappeared totally. The picture taken in 1985 and the picture taken in year 2002 give an example of what we are saying. Let's go back home. If we can all recollect, in 2012, Lagos experienced a great flood. We, we were lucky this year, but most part of the nation will have ex uh, uh, experienced serious flood. This is an example of the reality of, of climate change. For those people who are saying, no, climate change is, is not real, we are seeing it right uh, in, in our face. This, this is in, uh, a regular uh, area in Lagos in 2012. This is Lagos Ibado Expressway also in, in, in 2012. You can see the whole uh, wetland area submerged. This is Lagos Bar Beach. If you see what happened in Lagos Bar Beach over the years, this is how the erosion is. And this is up to, this is the whole Hamadu Belo way. And thank God to a visionary leader in Lagos State who, are, who think and we have been able to turn challenges to opportunity. You will now see what the bar beach look now. And you can see that Lagos has really turned the place from a, a bad situation to a good situation. So what is the effect of climate change? And how does climate change come about? Climate change, I said, comes about either by anthropogenic activity, which means human-induced activity or natural activity. Anthropogenic activity is defined as the human impact of climate change why natural climate change is the natural variability, which is the change in the direction of the sun, uh, melt, uh, ice glacier melt due to polarity or closeness of the sun and the moon. This has nothing to do with human activity. So I may mention earlier that a lot of studies has been done to relate climate change and occupational health and safety. If you look at uh, uh, this, contractual framework, we can see that climate change increase hazard and exposure. If there's increase in ambient temperature, if there's increase in air pollution, if there's increase in ultraviolet ray, there is a cascade of how it affects the industry. First, there'll be more other days. So most especially workers who work outside in outside environment, agricultural workers, construction workers, there will be high temperature. And if you have the temperature that is above normal, using personal protective wear that is accustomed to a particular temperature will become difficult. You can see. So also, if there's air pollution, maybe the ozone, lay, uh, the ozone of the environment is more than expected. These also have a particular change. If there is direct ultraviolet ray, people who work in workers who work in outside the environment will be prone to what skin cancer. Their immune system will what will reduce. These are basic example of how climate change is affecting occupational health and safety. And if there is extreme weather, if there is extreme weather, if there is serious change in weather. Workers who their job line is basically outside will be what affected. Another cut in the climate change is, is giving out is the increase in vector borne diseases. There are a lot of diseases that were not virulent in before, but because of change in the weather, because of changing in their environment, they are becoming more virulent. There are a lot of diseases that we know that it's we are not hearing about them before. There were diseases that occurred between uh, 1940s and 1950s. But because of the change in weather, 
we are seeing more of these diseases. And what does that protect? It protects that workers who work in a climate environment that these diseases are common will tend to have more, they'll be more vulnerable to, to heat. This is what we are talking about. Also, if you see this chart, potential impact of climate change, the climate change can either be on the person, it can either be on the natural resources, and it can also be on the social economics. So if it affects the social economics of an industry, that's likely for industry to do more of profit margin. If they do more profit margin, that means they will not be able to put more resources or more fund to protect the workers. And if workers are not protected, what happens? There will be a lot of agitation. There will be a lot of crisis. So this is what we as a profession needs to start work looking into. What industries do we expect climate change to really affect? The construction industry, agriculture, forestry, fishing, transportation, oil and gas exploration. And emergency workers are also what affected. Transports, municipal services, these are the industry that we see that the effect may be very, very high. When, when we talk about the X effects, what kind of X issues do we expect to increase due to the impact of climate change? Cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, if the air pollution is becoming more, that means the environment by which workers work will be tense. That means respiratory diseases will be, will be very, very high. Also, cramps, fatigue, he headache will be also common. These are things we should start looking into as, as professionals. Because of this, other countries have taken uh, steps to prevent workers due to the impact of what? Climate change. In the United States, in, in President Obama signed an executive order Executive Order 1365 in November 2013, which he said, to prepare the nation for the impact of climate change by undertaking action to enhance climate preparedness and resilience. The challenge is to characterize how these climate events may influence workers' health and safety, and also to establish plan for mitigating, responding, and adapting to the current and anticipated impact. So what does this implication? If United States, can sign an executive order, how because the main goal is to protect the impact of climate change on workers. We, as a country, must also look in that direction. If you, we are talking about the health and safety of workers, if we are talking about the welfare of workers, it's not about monetary gain, not increase in salary, not provision of houses, but also to protect their health. And the, if we say climate is changing, how do we respond to heat? How do we pro protect the workers? So how should we respond to this potential hazard? What information and tools do we need to protect workers and ensure that they are, the impact of climate change is what? Is mitigated with them. So many workers, works related as are due to climate change are already well categorized. They are well characterized. There are a lot of journals, there are a lot of articles on it. Are we in line with it? Are the professionals working with their academicians to know that this is what should be done? Such workers, such as the, the firefighters, the cleaners, our climate change will likely affect the workers in this, as, in, in this area should be what studied and looked into. Let's go to specific work-related operational hazard that has to do with climate change. Extreme heat. Heat is one of the major health hazards of workers, especially workers working outside. In recent times, even when you are inside your office and the, the air conditioning is not working at optimum or the capacity of workers inside the room becomes small, even with the AC, we often feel the heat. Now let's talk about workers who work outside. Example, traffic officers. They stay inside the sun nearly 12 hours of their shift. It can cause dehydration. It can cause heat stroke. 
which can lead to what? Loss of consciousness or even heart attack for people who are prone to heat. The use of personal protective equipment in extreme heat can also be challenging. But especially in, in our environment, which is tropic, you put a, a material that is basically designed for a temperate environment. And that is why professional workers, uh, professional uh, uh, health, health and safety also need to look at our purchasing and procurement activity. If you want to procure an equipment for your workers, are those equipment done for our climate of our environment? These are things we, we need to look at for. Chronic health effect due to continuous heat exposure also affects mental health. A lot of people have been talking about mental health issue, but do we relate it to climate change? Do we relate it to climate change? If somebody gets in, stays inside the sun and he doesn't have the choice of losing the job, he has to feed his family. This sometimes can lead to anxiety. It can also lead to depression. Chronic kidney diseases are also part of the effect of extreme heat which is attributed to what? To climate change. I'll give you an example of studies that uh, Adam, Adam and Pochett in 2013 says, farmers are among those workers at the highest risk of developing skin cancer because they are exposed to the sun all the time. Even if you are using a greenhouse, it is still the same. Also, there's a number of studies that point to the link between extreme ambient temperature an increase in occupational injuries. Wild, wildlife fires. We know that climate change has increased the frequency of wildlife fire and the severity is becoming high. So if there's wildlife fires, there's categories of workers who try to what? Put it off. The first responder, the firefighters. They need to what? Go inside and and put up the fire. Because of the extreme heat, they can't say because the heat is much and they, they, will, they, will, they will have to do their duty. So firefighters also suffer burns, smoke inhalation, and other related diseases. Extreme weather events. So if, like the recent times we had uh, flood in the country, some people affect responder. Who will, who will do it? You will say because there is, there is flooding, some people will not attend to others. So if there's flooding, other workers who are working in, uh, who are emergency responder, who what? Who will respond, and they are also exposed to things. So when they are, they are exposed to landslide, there is no to what? Light strike, lightning strike, which can be a serious problem to them. Let me give, let me, let, let me give an example of how climate change and extreme weather can trigger uh, a serious emergency which can cause a, 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 a catastrophe. In, in Anka chemical plants in Texas, following Hurricane Harvey in 2017, numerous plant worker and first responder and community reside around it were affected by a series of what? Chemical explosion of the plants. It was not an human activity. It was because of the hurricane that the chemical plant exploded and most of the water gets flooded. The people who are close to the environment get affected because of the exposure to chemical from the chemical plant, which is attribute, attributed to what? To, to the extreme weather. Here, pollution. Also, climate change has been known to increase air pollution. So if there is a warm uh, environment, warmer temperature will likely cause more air pollution, especially ground level ozone layer and particulate matter. We know in Lagos, the particulate matter in Lagos is very, very high. We are going towards the Amatan period. We are going towards the, the dry season where the uh, Sahara, the dust particles from, from the Sahara Desert will come towards the, uh, the coastal area. This with anthropogenic activity from hard dust, from construction activity, this exposed most of the workers to the So workers are most likely to be impacted by increase in air pollution, which can cause problems. Also, biological hazard and pesticide. We said that increase in climate change leads to 
new diseases. Zoonotic organisms that we are not hearing about are coming out. It, it, year 2000 was a, a definite year for, for everybody in the world. We were on lockdown because of what? Coronavirus. This is attributed to what? The impact of zoonotic organisms who are what? Impact of human being going into their environment or the interaction between human being and what? Zoonotic organism. These are likely impact of what? Climate change that may lead to biological hazard. And when we want to uh, mitigate the effect of how this biological hazard, there is need for increase in the use of pesticide. So when we use pesticide, workers who use this pesticide get exposed to what? To this pesticide. The more we put this pesticide outside, the more the workers get exposed. So, and what would this, too many use of pesticide will lead to uh, a, a lot of things. They can either get it in, in contact with their skin, their, their system gets absorbed into it. And when it gets into their system, kidney failure and other diseases will be what? Will be rampant. So what do we, what needs to be done? What can we do to mitigate all this impact of climate change on, on the environment? So that means we need to build resilience against climate effect. How do we build resilience against climate effect? Number one, forecast climate impact and assess vulnerability. What industries, what categories of workers are likely to be affected by climate change? So which means we need to do what? We need to assess the vulnerability. The second one, we need to do a projection of disease burden. This, there's an increase in this kind of disease. What do we associate it with? Which sector of the industry is getting affected? These are things safety and health professionals need to do. We need to put health, public health intervention into it. We need to put public health intervention as government, as practitioners, as individual, as captains of industries. These are things we need to do. The next one, we need to develop and implement a climate health adaptation plan. Yes, many countries, many cities are developing climate change action plan, but that is basically for the environment. But if you are taking care of the environment, you are not taking care of the people that will live in the environment. It doesn't make sense. So while we are planning, uh, making effect against flooding, against uh, coastal erosion, against uh, ozone layer depletion, there is need for us to also have action plan for health and safety. We need to evaluate impact and improve quality of these activities. That means every industries, every categories of industry, every sector, must look at how climate change is affecting their sector and develop a plan to what mitigate it. So then what should we do? And workplace should put strategy in place. Health and safety management practice, including management commitment and employee participation must be a key. Uh, there are a lot of industries that say, why should we have an HSC department? Why should we concentrate on the workers? Uh, yeah, we have a worker union, uh, we have an HMO. No, it is not about that. You need to carry the workers along. Each of the workers must be taught how to recognize an hazard. You must do hazard recognition, hazard assessment, and how to put control in place. This is a top level management decision, right from the CEO in each of the companies. Employer preparedness should include Devoting resources to hazard recognition. I'll give an example. Uh, the transport sector. The transport sector is a very large sector that has a lot of drivers. So drivers that drive 12 hours, eight hours, sitting down for a longer period. And we know that sitting, when drivers sit a lot for a longer period, it affects most especially male drivers. It affects the retro, uh, reproductive organ. If we don't do something, which means we need to tell the workers, after driving to, for some hours, you need to rest, take a break, and do this. But we know that our people, oh, I can quickly 
let me drive for four hours, five hours. No, if we are for most for drivers who drive longer period, there is need for us to orientate them, change the, the mindset that it is not about your strongness, it is not about your body, but it's about each of the organ available in your body. Also, performing vulnerability assessment to determine which work sector is prone to hazard is very, very key. Also, implementing a control strategy with policy. So as governments, as governments, most especially safety commission, occupational health department, we need to start putting up policy that will help to change company direction towards climate change. People are not relating climate change to health. People are not relating climate change to hazard. We need to start putting up uh, policy in that direction. We need to start putting up procedures. That means the Institute of Safety Professionals must come up with procedure for specific work schedule that has to do with what? Climate change. Prevention through design. Yes. I, 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 I said most of the personal protective equipment we are using are imported uh, into the country. How do we see a change in how we can improve the design to make the personal protective equipment very, very conducive for our environment so that our workers will not continue to what? To complain. These are things that we need to what? To do. Research. Data is one thing that is uh, a problem in, in this part of the world. And for us to have good information, whether for policy direction, we need to start using our data. The academicians and the professionals and government needs to sit together. Investigating getting climate change related hazard and risk of population is very, very important. Using surveillance data on diseases, injuries, and occupational hazard to guide research is also very, very important. As an HSC manager in, in, in your company, if you see a, an increase in trend of a particular hazard and you feel your company have done things, uh, put in place mechanism, then you will need to look at it. Is it climate related? Is it psychologically related? These are things we need to start what looking into. Developing and implementing, evaluating different things, it's, it's something that we also need to do. Surveillance can be used to identify the impact of climate change on workers' health to help establish research agenda and also help plan to implement and evaluate uh, preventive measures. Occupational medicine and cl clinical response. When we start seeing new diseases, when we start seeing new things that is affecting workers, there is need for people in the occupational, in, in the hospitals to start relating this thing, either to what? To climate change or especially to a particular region or a particular communities. These are things we need to, to do. So what are my recommendations? What are my recommendations? What are things government needs to do? What are things individuals needs to do? What are these professional bodies needs to do? We need to start conducting new research, linking climate change and occupational diseases, identify numbers of workers that are exposed, develop new hazard control and guide, guidance, uh, guidelines, occupational exposure limits. Yes, initially we said occupational exposure limit to certain chemicals, uh, certain substance, but we need to start looking at this substance more in the body do we have to change this uh, limit? These are things we need to start doing. There is need for collaboration between government, scientists, and also the academicians. Developing leading indicator on climate potential of earth is also very, very important. We, funding is also very key. Funding is also very key. Companies, professional bodies need to start giving out funds to mitigate against this effect. Identifying and developing communication tools 
How do we communicate to workers, most especially workers who are not educated? How do we how do we communicate climate change effects on their heads and on their uh, 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 on, uh, and how do they prevent occurring diseases? These are things we need to to do. In conclusion, from what I've been saying, I think we can see that climate change has increased, and it's also known that climate change has effects on occupational health and safety, and there is likely for it to create more. So climate change is presenting many challenges, and it will continue to present a lot of challenges. There is strong evidence that climate change is and will continue to be a job-related, that will continue to increase job-related injury, illness, and death. And there is need for us to do more as professionals, as captain of industry, as government. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sir, thank you so much, Mr. Ashley, for this wonderful presentation. On this note, I want to go into question and answer. If you have any questions around our lecture, please go ahead. Anyone? Any question? Please, if you find this. Okay, contribution. I want to share a little bit about climate change for my. The speakers yesterday have spoken on about. Okay. But the carbon footprint on what Nigeria government needs to do have not been mentioned. Like, for example, we have AC, electrical AC. The gas they are using is a big contributing factor. There is gas 410, RO32. RO32 is the most compliant for carbon footprint for climate change improvement. But nothing is being mentioned. Industries might have over 200 issues. All of them are working at the same time. If you can talk about exposure, imagine environment that have over 200 issues working at the same time on that same old gap of 410. What would be the health hazard? It's a big challenge. My company, from where from, is the Japanese company, let me just mention. From this lecture and what they have been insisting on shows that they are far ahead of us as a Nigerian government. Nothing is being done. Like when I joined the company, they were using diesel forklift from forklift diesel to LPG, from LPG to battery. The forklift work by just you can't hear any sound, no noise. That is Japanese. On the AC, they have abolished all the atmospheric gas. No Nigeria government is enforcing. They are using Japanese plan in Nigeria company here. And now for weekend, they are abolishing gas generator. They are going on solar. They are spending money asking, why are you doing this? They say that is a demand from their parent company, which is Japanese. So I want our own government to look on the carbon footprint or how to improve on it, not just to say climate change. What is the action? Let's look at it from KPI. Keep people informed. That's the KPI. 
where you like, you know, have this information. You don't pass this information to your so that you they will not know where you're coming from. And I know most of us, in fact, naturally, humans as a being, our biggest problem is communication. Yeah. Not very and if we get to have the communication, the planning will be effective. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Any question? Question, yes, thank you. Question, I want questions, yes. In addition to what is said as a civil professional, you can have your policies in place, you can have the plans in place, implementation is key. Don't put them in the cabinet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to appreciate the presentation of the last speaker. So, last. Um, I, I will, I want to direct my question to him. It's very easy to sit down here and quote what is going on in America, in Australia. But uh, in this of our environment, let's come back home to Lagos State, for example. On the road, you see a lot of people that the smoke that, they, that comes from the airport is a pollutant on its own. The government, they have a dumb side 
where they burn most of this uh, trash, uh, uh, the beans, the rubbish, and uh, the smoke were also going to the atmosphere. In the Niger Delta area, we are having a lot of uh, that flaring. And we are talking about tackling climate change for people development and imperative for health, security, and environment. Uh, I think there should be a collaboration between the ministry and the safety professionals on how to really this issue of uh, climate change. Is the presentation. If you like, if you can stay here and make a beautiful presentation, if you have not, not taken steps to control the issue and do something about it, the climate change will change us. We change us. Because, and uh, you can see, most people are, people are suffering from health related uh, issues. So please, beyond presentation, I think implementation should be uh, a, to be the enforcing factor starting from our area of domain. Thank you. Mr. Asisigwai, the question for you. Yeah, thank, th thank you, thank you very, very much. Uh, basically, we most professionals we tend to uh, negate yeah, yeah, a lot of things. When we do presentation and we give example of what happened in developed country, it's not for us to compare what is happening here. Anything that anybody yeah. says is based on research and facts. Things that are done elsewhere is for us to see and adapt. It's either you adapt or you try to see how you can look into it. I have often been asked that question wherever I go, that Lagos State, we burn refuse, we do this. No government, whether in Lagos, whether in Port Harcourt or in Kano, who burn refuse. We don't burn refuse. It's a natural phenomenon. Methane generates from waste, and automatically it will burn on itself. Archaeologically, if you go to Italy, if you go to Italy, the adopt sites that were in Italy in the 18th century, they grew up up to now. There was smog in England in the first industrial pollution before they got to where they are now. So as a developing nation, we are also growing. Government cannot do this thing alone. That is why professionals, government also li always listen to professionals. If you have a, if you have a, a presentation, if you, if you have a proposal that you feel it can help government to solve a particular problem. That's a prof it's a professional body that is recognized in the world. Set it up, meet with the agency that is responsible. People in government don't say they are the one that knows everything. That is why there's always collaboration between professionals. In my presentation, I said it, that there should be collaboration between government, the academicians, and the professionals. We are all working for the good of the people. And that is why it is very, very important. Countries that have set up standard, they see, they, 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 have, they have data. They have seen this data and they are working on it. I give you an example. There are a lot of industry that a lot of hazard, safety hazard will occur and the company will not report it to government. You don't expect somebody that is in Alausa to know what is happening in the industry. Most of the HSC manager, most of the human resources manager who just said the just tell the worker, hey, please, hey, don't worry, hey, we'll pay you for treatment. They will cover it up without reporting it to government. If you report it to government, that is how government will be able to know uh, this is the trend of issues that is coming up. This is the trend of things that is coming up. So we are not here to pass blame. That, that is the problem we keep on seeing in Nigeria. Everybody will always want to blame government. Government will always want to blame individual. No. We are supposed to have a collaborative effect. See, uh, the, the, the flooding that occurred in the country, people are saying, eh, we were not one, we were not one. Nimet gave, a, uh, Nimet gave a, a study that Nigeria, we are going to witness a lot of rain. Can't we be prepared? Do you expect uh, the federal government to come and dredge each of the canals in each of the states? It's not possible. 
the professional organization that is in charge of prediction said we are going to experience serious flood. When we know that we are going to experience serious flood, why didn't each state, why didn't each professional in each state make up a plan for it? So that's what we're saying. We have this data, we have this information, but we all work in silos. And for a country to move forward, we can't continue to work in silos. We have to use each of our best professionals to work things together. And that's what we're saying. The presentation is not to say we want to copy what America is doing. President Obama set up an executive order because they were able to see that climate change is having an effect on the health and safety of the workers. And the executive of, uh, order put up mechanism that's supposed to be done. That is what we expect in, the, in Nigeria also. If government is not coming up with this policy, if government is not coming up with this uh, action, there's nothing bad in a professional setting it up, coming up with, uh, with government, and we work things out. That is how you make, you, you, you lead a country to, 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 to forward. Thank you. Um, on behalf of um, Eastport Lagos and of course Eastport Nigeria, because we have our president here and his team, and all our inductees today, we really appreciate your presentation. It's a big insight and it is very key, especially to our new, our new inductees for today. I'm sure they are going home with the Lord and you have really did that to their interest in safety. So we really appreciate you, sir. Thank you and God bless you. Well, next week, on, sir, please do answer of you because we shall come in it. as long as climate issues persist. Thank you. Thank you, Maud. Thank you very much for having me. I wish you all a good deliberation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. We appreciate you. So just a recap on some of the issues he raised. He did say that climate change is real. Look, and he gave instances with all the horrible things of the world, horrible rising, which um, led to the disappearance of the glacier, coastal erosion, which are also experiencing even here in Lagos. And this gave an instance of the 2012 Lagos um, flood. And of course, the Lombardia area of Bay Wayne and Kogi area, which are all familiar with. He gave um, us some of the causes of climate change, which he said is human induced. He also mentioned that there's a natural property that is that minimal, that the whole driving the one we are discussing here now is human induced. And also observed that a lot of stories are on climate change. To elaborate, they need to use the data from the studies by government uh, authorities and uh, bodies like ESPON to obtain the excesses of climate uh, change.
to show that what is spiritual will not just be possible, but also fit them with our local needs and situations. And mitigation. He observed that there is need to build resilience. And some of these will include to assess our vulnerability, do projections of diseases, the disease body, like which sector of the industries are most affected, do public interventions, develop a public climate change adaptation plan. Each industry should develop a plan based on its operation and how it is affected. And in doing all this, management and commitment is very important to yourself. The single day transportation industry as one of the, like the drivers who sit for hours as one of those um, adversely affected. Based on assessments uh, and implement control policy, by way of taking the company direction to climate change, as well as put up standards and procedures dealing on climate change. There is also need to consider equipment and design so that they change from the design stage. Research, of course, is said is key because data is what is needed in combating climate change. And above all, there is need for collaboration of all stakeholders, government, researchers, academicians, professionals, 